awesome. I said, Dad, put it in my desk. <laughs> and uh, so he did. But they're a little dated. you got to find someone who uses wax. I mean, they don't have many people that do, but I think you could still make a ring out of it. I don't know. I never tried. Were those sold to the fans, or were they inside for the... Only inside. Okay, inside. Okay. And also, no. you you have a, a Van Halen logo gold necklace in there. Is that Was that a gift from the record company? No, we got stuck mainly by the record company as a gift. Right. You meant- <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, at that point, I don't quite know what it is. It could have been one of the gold tone ones that we sold, but they all got disappeared. It could have been a prototype. Uh, I knew it was in there, but I wasn't sure whether it was a prototype or not. Right, right. And now also, you have a, a 1984 Valerie Bertinelli sleeveless shirt. What is that? Valerie, it was Jaffe Productions. Right. And that was her company. Okay. And she just brought out uh, two or three dozen for the guys, the crew and the band. And, you know, we like to show our muscles off when we had them. What was on the shirt? It was uh, a couple of playing cards. And in the back, it just said, Jaffe Productions. Oh, okay. They're cool. Okay. I love them. Okay. You also have an, a wedding invite to Eddie and Valerie's wedding from 1981, as well as a bachelor party invite for Alex Van Halen from 1983. So those are interesting personal items as well. What was Eddie and Val's wedding like, and what was Al's bachelor party like? Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> it definitely was like that. Dave. Uh, Al's was kind of weird. I guess it was on a boat. There were certain unclad women or something like that. I don't remember. Was anybody um, fa- were anybody famous there? Not really. No? Okay. Edward had every movie star imaginable. Right. And I think if you read the book, you will see it wasn't exactly right. as planned. Right. But I don't think I want to go into that right now. I, you know, people have had dinner, might not settle their stomach. <laughs> <laughs> you also have a summer tour signed cash receipts ledger from 1978. So is this for like every expense that you you had to keep ledgers for every single thing with all the receipts and everything for the band? Whether if you took them for a meal or you paid for their room and you had all the receipts logged. Yeah. Okay. You see, they figured I'm making five hundred bucks a week. Right. I'm at the big time. This is what I make for every day. Right. And twenty five dollars a day per day. Right. I was in the big leagues. <laughs> right. Um, so basically, what the accountant and Marshall figured was, I still they did not take my accounting for the whole tour. Wow. And that is hard because you got to make sure everything was in there. Right. And so we got back and we said, well, where's your accounting? I said, it's in my red book. I said, it's all there, of course. I said, of course. Where would it go? Right. And uh, first they did a they added it all up, and they said, you know, Mr. Monk, you're $500 short, which I uh, went through probably $50,000, maybe sure. more. Mm. And I said, that's not very well possible. They said, what do you mean? I said, do it again. So it turned out that they owed me $325. Right. <laughs> and a little idea about I would nibble off the edges. It just wasn't my style ever. Sure, sure. There's some great stuff you have here. A 1979 South African radio interview, a 1978 Running with Van Halen radio broadcast. These are really cool items that, you know, I, I guess Dave and I are always balking that these are things that the record company should be putting out for the fans in some sort of box set or something. So right. what, uh, are these things that they would give to you as the manager after they've done these interviews or these specials? Exactly. Right. Okay. You know, uh, there was the, um, what was the name of the guy who did the shows? Jim um, Ladd? 
Jim Ladd? Right. Right. There was a lot of Jim Ladds, and they were really made to play once or twice. I never played them. Right. They're in mint condition. Sure. I actually found one bootleg record. It's kind of rare. And I kept it and brought it to Warner Brothers, and I couldn't give a rat's ass. <laughs> so I put it away, and I never saw another one. Wow. It was done pretty cool. Wow. What was it? It was a Van Halen bootleg. Do you know what it was a bootleg of? I never played it, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I didn't have the time to play bootlegs. Yeah. I didn't like them, but I kept this one because... And then I saw one like it before. Right. Why don't you send so it went, to me and I'll play it yeah. and I'll tell you what it is. Well, I think it, like, is absolutely. it... I oh, thank you. I all the that. lab ones and, <laughs> you know, I think there's a couple of board tapes that really? I made up. Yeah. Nice. I, mean, I know there's David Sanborn and Bonnie Reed when I was working with them. Wow. And, uh... Do you have any soundboards of Van Halen? I think there are two in there. In the lot? Yeah, I'm not positive, but I think I, I, I found two of them that I had done in the very beginning uh, of 78. Because basically I was a sound man, a tour manager, and I did lighting. And, right. Yeah, so... Now, are those reel-to-reel tapes? What no, they're, they're cassettes. The cassette, okay, okay. Interesting. And now you also have a 1978 promo ad from Warner Brothers that has Van Halen <laughs> racing with the devil. Yeah, I think they made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think they switched a couple of the pictures of the band members, too, on that picture, right? Yeah. And what's <laughs> nice about that is if it was a regular one, okay, but this is a misprint. Right. This is a mistake. As usual, I just Put it in my file, and it's nice and clean and like it was made 40 years ago. When I took it out, I was like, wait a minute, I remember this. This is a mistake. Right. And it's got Warner Brothers on it. Yeah. And Eddie Templeman. And, yeah. You know, let's just say they screwed up real good. Let, right. No, let me ask you. I noticed that in that print ad and as well as on some other things like the Christmas card that was signed, David was originally calling himself David Lee without the Roth. Do you remember why he did that? He was probably lazy and didn't want to spell out his whole name. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> I mean, David Lee, you know who he was. Right. Why do I have to write the whole name? He was very energetic doing those four. Right. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. So. And and also they had Michael Anthony as Mike Anthony, which is sort of interesting. Uh, you never really see him along those lines being called that. So those are some interesting things. There's also a bunch of financial ledgers you had in there. You had some traffic citations, some traffic tickets from David and Ed, which is really wild. Yeah, yeah. It, it tends to drive quickly. <laughs> I guess if you've got a Maserati, you can do that. Uh, yeah, that's why him and Sammy got along so well. Roger. What? <laughs> that's why him and Sammy got along so well, because apparently Sammy can't drive 55. So that's how they met, through their a Ferrari dealer or something. How did you know that? It's sort of a known thing that that Eddie, the reason Eddie met Sammy was he was talking to Claudio, his Ferrari guy. His car guy. Yeah, and, and he yeah. said, you know, Dave left the band and we're without a singer. And he said, why don't you call Sammy? Because Sammy was also working with Claudio. That's the guy who hooked them up. Well, if I wasn't there, then I can't say anything about it. I don't talk about things that I wasn't physically there. Sure, sure. You also had a, uh, another unique thing was a, a 1984 Panama storyboard proposal. I guess it was Dave and Pete Angelus who were doing the videos at the time. They were storyboarding the videos, so you have some of those in the lot as well. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because Pete would give me them and say, what do you think? I'd say, great. Yeah. Love it. No, but most of them I think Pete kept. Okay. I kept a couple of them. Right. But it's a hard thing. With what David and Peter were doing was very difficult. Right. They had a storyboard the whole video. Sure. And sure. they were amazing at doing that. Right. I used to love to see David come in the day he was supposed to have the lyric. 
and I remember once he had them on the back of a grocery bag. <laughs> okay. And he had written it in, in pencil, and I think he wrote it the night before. But David was really a brilliant lyricist. Sure. People underestimate him, but just incredible stuff. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. And you also had a hand-carved sign that was made specially for Van Halen. Can you speak on that? Yeah. Bill Graham would have a day on the green. And if you were headlining, he would make a special room where you'd have either pinball games or some theme. I called Bill up and he said, no, would you do me a favor? Yeah, sure. He said, would you have the guys, if I send it to them, sign the foot and a half by about five feet? It was a big piece. Would you have them sign it for me so I can put it up in my office? And I said, sure. So the guy spent this, that time, they spent three hours wow. doing it. And I gave that to Bill. And Bill sent me a letter of thank you and sent me an original one. Oh, wow. So, wow. Yeah. And there were a couple, like, he would have special redwood wine signs of different little small signs, little Van Halen signs. There was a couple in there. Right. You also have it in your lot here, prototype shirts. And if you could explain what those are, you guys were making your own merch. So were there different test runs of shirts and those were sort of some of the test run ones? Yeah, yeah. Pat Kelly pretty much would oversee the factory. And I would go out there and was in chat for it. And what they would do is they make up the artwork. And you know how you make a silk train? You burn it. And you put the shirt on top, and you burn the, the screen, and anyway. And they would come to the office with the with the samples before we would decide what color we wanted. Right, right. I remember once David was in a little bit of a bad mood. He said, this is sucks. And he <laughs> spit his milkshake and threw it out the window, so we didn't use that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> but in actuality, that that was a, a lot of work because you you couldn't just knock them off. You had to get the right colors, and we had a six colored printing machine, and it was called PMC. Pat named it that as Quit Monk in Charge. I don't know if I was actually in charge, right? Um, <laughs> but anyhow, um, that was our fact. We ran two shifts, and a third shift, we um, farmed out to another printer. Right, right. And um, we were doing three shifts, because you can only do two, or you're going to... Sure. You can't do that. Every month, a 44-foot semi would swing around to Chatsworth and pick up about a million dollars in merchandise. Wow. And that was what we'd sell for that month. That's incredible. I guess when I left, they destroyed the company and went back to working with like Bill Farmer. Wow. For the old 25 cents, not 50 cents. How did you guys combat bootleg shirts in the parking lot? And what would you do about that? What we did was in 8081, we got one of the first nationwide federal injunction to confiscate shirts. Okay. And we'd have to go out that, it was about 10 of us, and we'd have to go out with U.S. Marshals. And the judge said, you can confiscate them, you can take them away, but you have to bag them, tag them, where they got them, how many. So six years later, I'm sitting with thousands and thousands of bag bootleg t-shirts right and i said to my lawyer jules what am i gonna do with these right he said well go ask your lawyer and your accountant they'll know so i knew they wouldn't know <laughs> so i first went to the lawyer and i said well what should we do with these we got maybe 200 300 400 thousand shirts wow wow the lawyer said so i said wait a minute they're ill-gotten gain. You want me to sell them this chunk? Oh, yeah, yeah, we can make a lot of money. 